turn our attention to Spain. Joan Laporta, the president of Barcelona, explaining his decision to sack Xavi here. Xavi told me that he trusted this team, but that some of his statements looked like he changed his speech. It caused me to rethink, and I had the feeling that I had to do a change. And also with the same feeling shared with the board. That's the uh, president of Barcelona, Joan Laporta. Uh, all right, Ale. Lots <laughs> of problems at Barcelona. Is Laporta the biggest one? I don't feel like he's part of the solution right now. Because there was an opportunity to make a really, really tough but necessary decision in the earlier part of his uh, stint as a president for Barcelona. And that is, we're in trouble. They knew they were in trouble. They told us they were in trouble. But their solution to getting out of trouble was, let's pull some levers. Hey, we'll lever over here, lever over there. We're all doing this thing. And we're having this conversation because now you're trying to survive. But survive in the now, not thinking about the future. Now, it's been years since that was the case. And you're still not anywhere near as well as you should be at this point because in pulling those levers, you were sacrificing your future. And so now the future is here. The future is now the present. And guess what? We're still in the same position as a club, Barcelona, are, than they were years ago. So in that sense, Laporta, because he is the decision maker, and yes, he, there is a board, but he is the decision maker. Yes, he is part of the problem and hasn't been part of the solution. And so now you're just... You're just basically trying to survive. You're just, you're just trying to swim long enough, stay, stay alive long enough until somebody throws you another lifeguard. And you're like, oh, okay, here we go. And now here we, get, we grab momentum. But that's not, way, that's not the way to run a club. It all seems all very desperate. It all seems very sort of emotional decisions. And if, at the case of Xavi, as it pertains to Laporta in Barcelona, he was going, right? Xavi was going. That decision had been made. And then... You go and take the picture that I have referenced time and time again, the three musketeer pictures with Deco, Laporta, and Xavi. No, he's staying. He's our guy. He's Barcelona all the way. Barcelona legend. That's right. We're going into the future with Xavi. And then a month later, no, Xavi's not our guy because of basically telling the truth in, a, in an interview. If that's how you're making your decisions, it doesn't show a team that actually has a plan in place and a club that has a plan in place to now leave those difficulties behind and face the future. If you told me there's a plan in place, there are objectives, and now you execute that plan in order to achieve those objectives and you start seeing that growth of Barcelona, then I'm telling you, yeah, sure, I, I, I trust what they're doing. Right now, it's hard to trust anything that Barcelona are doing as a club. Gab, what do you make of the comments? And beyond that, the reasoning used here by Laporta uh, to defend his sacking of Xavi. Well, look, the reasoning makes makes little sense. Um, I agree with what, 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 what Ali said. This is not this is not a classy way to do it. Um, but the reasoning makes no sense in this. What what like? Oh, he said he had uh, faith in the team, but then he answered. He said things I didn't like, which made me think he didn't have faith. Why don't you just ask him if he has faith in the team? Why don't you go through the team and says, I have faith in this guy, I don't have faith in that guy. What is our budget? What is the reality? This is what grown-ups do, right? So, no, so I, I don't buy this. For whatever reason, I think, I suspect that he thought that he's very big on if everybody thinks positively and if everybody's positive about this, then projects are more likely to succeed. And I think he didn't like Chavi's negativity. Just like he didn't like it when, when Xavi would get himself sent off during games. And he didn't like it when he saw angry Xavi on the bench. He wants people to be happy, positive. He wants Barcelona uh, to win. And I think Xavi didn't really fit that anymore. And I think that is the reason he got rid of it. I don't like the way he did it. And yeah, I, I agree he's probably not part of the solution at this stage. On the other hand, once you pull those levers that, that, that Ali talked about... There's no going back. The genie's not going back in the bottle. You cannot travel back in time, not pull the levers and say, hey, we're going to suck it up with kids and youngsters for a year or two, and we're going to grow that way, and we're going to get back uh, and undo all the damage that the Bartomeu regime did. It doesn't work that way. You've gone down that route, and you probably have to continue down that route for a while. Must be Shaka just up. Brutal time to be a Barcelona fan. Can you imagine? Absolutely. See, and seeing exactly, Hopeless almost. See, seeing what Real Madrid are, are doing, how they 
how they manage their finances, um, that they can, they can afford to sign someone like Kylian Mbappe and still have as, as much leeway in their transfer budget and, um, and, and salary cap. Everything, everything about it, uh, about Real Madrid's business, is in total contrast to what you see from, from Barcelona. And, and, and to, to the point about Laporta, if you're not a... OK, maybe all these financial issues aren't of his making, but if at this point you're not a part of the solution, you're very much a part of the problem. And I, I don't understand, or let me, let me put it, the only way that Laporta's thinking and positioning makes any sense is if he has this belief about the Super League that nobody else seems to. Mm. That is the only reason that pulling the financial levers that he did last season and, and before that makes any kind of sense, that he really believed that the Super League was, was going to happen. And maybe... Not enough people thought positively. Maybe that's the, the whole problem here. Because it ain't coming to bail them out. Tough time to be a Barcelona fan. But wait, there could be help on the way. At least according oh, to uh, Mundo. <laughs> Rafinha llave para Luis Diaz. Rafinha is the key for Luis Diaz. That's right. Barcelona apparently targeting the Liverpool winger. Gab, where do you want to start with this? I mean, I feel like every time we talk about a Barcelona move, we ask you if it's realistic, and the answer is always no. This, is, this isn't realistic, is it? Luis Diaz has a contract to what, 2027 at Liverpool? He's not going to Barca. Uh, yeah, I mean, for this to happen, you would have to have Luis Diaz come out and say, tell Arne Slot, hey, I don't want to be here. I want to go to Barcelona. You would have to have Arne Slot go and tell Michael Edwards, uh, Julian Ward, hey, I don't like Luis Diaz. He's ugly and he's a bad footballer. Get rid of him. Um, and it would need to be something like that. I mean, Rafinha, I think, is one of he's one of Barcelona's few, let's call them, I hate to use this word, but let's call them what they are, saleable assets in the sense that they are people who have a market and who, you know, unlike, say, De Jong or, or Pedri or Gavi or, or Lamine Yamal, are not untouchable in the sense that, you know, if you have to sacrifice them to raise cash, you do so. Um, but again, from Liverpool's perspective, whether Rafinha would be a priority. And also, uh, Luis Diaz is on big wages, maybe not as high as Rafinha's, but it would have to almost be the other way around. Rafinha would have to be a real priority for Liverpool, who would then not just do a straight swap, but give you uh, Diaz plus cash for Rafinha. I just don't really, I don't really see that happening. Mm. Times are tough, Ale, obviously, mm. at Barcelona when it comes to money. Mm. Is this how you would strengthen the team? Well, first of all, let me just say it, it, this wouldn't be a straight swap in that I, right now, I take Luis Diaz over Rafinha all day, mm -hmm. every day, right? Uh, and so <laughs> then you get to the point to where if you're Barcelona, you're trying to structure deals that are creative in nature and you have to have a club on the other side and a player on the other side who's willing to be as creative as you're trying to be. Uh, it feels like you're selling magic beans here if you're Barcelona. It, 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 it just doesn't feel like this is something realistic. And again, if we go back to the initial conversation and their financial difficulties, then you have to think about what are the needs of Barcelona and a winger type player Look, as good as Luis Diaz is, I don't believe that he is that much of an upgrade over Rafinha that you sort of have to make this aggressive move and this creative move and somehow make it work. I think restraint right now for Barcelona would be uh, my advice. Discipline, fiscal discipline, restraint. Take a step back, really take a step back, and know that for the next couple of years, you're going to be in the background. But you're doing this so that then you can, I suppose you're taking a couple of steps back so you can take a big leap forward. Not this one step back, one step forward, one step back. And every time it's a step back, it's because you're having to find somebody to sell so that you can go buy somebody. And you're finding somebody to sell so you can register somebody. Again, this doesn't seem like a realistic plan or a sustainable plan for a club.